Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Every Muharram 10, beginning of something, on all his history. And inshallah, Rahman, this Muharram that we enter, um, Shaykh Nazim Efendi was pointing 10 years ago. He has a sohbet. I didn't listen to it, but there is a, a video that, that he pointed this Muharram exactly 2020. And he even gave like date 30, 31st August 2020. It's going to be big um, change in this world. Uh, beginning of something very big. So we have to be careful. And your Juma Hutta all, all also was um, about that, that we have to wake up. So is this year going to be something that we have to wake up, we have to be careful? I think so. Any other question? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. It's hard to believe that Thirty days ago? Or is it thirty days ago? Yes? Thirty days ago. One month ago that we were in a different country. And we were making the Kurban. It's hard to believe that one month had passed since that day. Wherever that you are, here or there, one month had passed. Why we're having repeating holy days and nights, one of the reasons is so that we can understand how was it last year, the year before? What did we learn 10 years ago? What did we learn 30 days ago? What did we say that has never been said before? The year ends with Qurban. The Islamic year ends with Qurban, no? That you cut an animal. It begins, it ends with Qurban. Where we are remembering the Qurban, the sacrifice that Hazrat Ibrahim salam had to make. He had to sacrifice his beloved son. To show from that time until the end of times that those who are properly following him will not hesitate to sacrifice the ones that they love the most, whatever that they love the most. Be quiet a little bit, sit and listen, don't move around too much. There's a sohbat on a holy day. I'm not reading from a book. We're waiting for them to send us something. I'm not learning this. I'm not opening a book to read out to you. If the more that you're willing to listen, you're opening up, the more they are going to reveal. If not, I'll be quiet and I'll talk to myself and all of you can go home. Move around as much as you want. Otherwise, you are cutting it off. Anyone can be comfortable where you are. If you're not comfortable here, you can go to another room somewhere. But if you are here, try to keep it tight a little bit to see what they are sending. So the year ends with the sacrifice that our grandfather Ibrahim salam he made. And from that time until the end of times, those ones who are from his nation, not just by blood, by spirit also. Spirit is more important than blood. 
that they are not going to hesitate. He pulled it 70 times. 70 times he pulled the knife on Hazrat Ismail, knowing that the knife was going to cut, but the knife did not cut. That happened. The event that happened is very important. And the Awliya Allah, they're remembering that event even in the day of Ashura. The year ends with a sacrifice, and the year begins with a sacrifice. And the year began, begins with the sacrifice of the most beloved ones, beloved ones. Do you understand how extreme this is? If Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, he cut his son, but he didn't cut. And Shaykh Andy is saying, because Allah replaced that sacrifice with the ram that was from Habil, another sacrifice. From the beginning of time. And he brought it down and Ibrahim alayhi salam cut that instead of his son. Understand what the nation of Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam the most beloved of the most beloved ones, they have to go through what kind of test they have to go through. What? You think we belong to the nation of the most praised one just by name? Ibrahim alayhi salam pulled that 70 times. More than 70 times that knife pulled on the Ahlul Bayt. And their supporters. Somebody asked me, in all the events in the history on the 10th of Muharram, on the day of Ashura, it's showing Allah's favor, it is showing Allah's mercy, pulling people out, pulling nations and prophets out from difficult situations. But, on the 10th of Muharram, after the Holy Prophet had passed, the same kind of safety did not reach the Hazrat Hussein and his family and his supporters. So the Ashura for this nation is different. For the earlier nations it is different. Prophet it was reported he never felt more excitement to fast as he did with the tent of Muharram to fast. And he's even saying to the Jews at that time was living in Medina, who were fasting on the 10th of Ashura, 10th of Muharram, on the day of Ashura, he says, we have more rights over Musa than you. Because the Jews, they were fasting to thank Allah. Because Allah saved them from Firaun. But what happened? What happened? Was it 10 years after the Prophet ﷺ passed? Some time passed, not one generation finished. And it is showing for this nation what Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, the heaviness of the test that was on him, his heart felt heavy. He had to dream three times where Allah is commanding him, saying, fulfill your promise. Three times. He knew what the promise was. He said, if you give me a son, not for myself, not because I can love the son and my lineage can continue like that, like so many Muslim families are thinking about. He says, no, if you give me a son, that son can carry my prophethood. Because if I die without a son, without a successor, then this prophethood, which is calling Allah, calling people, the ummat, the whole world to you, it will end. And I'm worried that my mission is going to fail. This is why he asked. And Allah tested him. Because he's saying, if you give me what I'm asking, Ya Rabbi, I will sacrifice the thing that I love the most. And when he had the son, Allah says, sacrifice that one that you love the most.
and he brought his son and he brought a knife. Thirty days ago we were remembering that. And he cut his son, but the knife did not cut. But his heart broke. He pulled it again. It didn't cut, but his heart broke. After 70 times, he threw the knife away, and the knife sliced open a rock. It was so sharp. Allah sent down that ram, and they sacrificed it. And our shaykh says, if Ismail salam was sacrificed, Everyone who calls themselves from the millet of Ibrahim salam, belonging to the nation of salam, which is all of us, it is a farce for us to sacrifice our firstborn son. Prophet salam, he sacrificed his grandson. Let's not touch his sons that they were born, one of which he was called Ibrahim and he passed when he was seven years old, yes? Of course, coincidence. Believer must put two and two together, what happened yesterday to today, what happened next year. Leave his sons, his beloved grandson, Hazrat Hussein, with Hazrat Hussein's sons. Of course, in it were also children of Hazrat Hassan, they were also there. Other supporters, they were also there. And they were sacrificed. Seventy times more than that. The knife did not pull for nothing. And this nation of the most beloved, Allah is showing those ones who are calling themselves Ahlil Bayt and loving them for the sake of Allah when they are overpowered, when they are outnumbered, when they are weak. When there is no support, what is it that you must do? Put aside Yazid. Everyone is just concentrating on Yazid. Yazid didn't betray him. There were thousands who betrayed him. Yazid acted according to his egoistic nature. He didn't make a promise and broke his promise. He was true to his own evil self. But there were tens of thousands who made a promise to the grandson of the Holy Prophet And they betrayed him. Why did they betray him? So many they betrayed him even before they got to Karbala because Yazid was promising them dunya. Yazid was not fighting for haq. He was fighting for power. Those ones who were supporting him wanted that piece of power too. This was not about religion. It is not about akida. They believed the same. This was about power. So the followers of the Prophet or those who claim that they love the family of the Prophet what do you do when you do not have power? Do you betray? Do you give in? Do you give up? Those ones who betrayed, hoping that they were going to go to Yazid and Yazid was going to reward them, they were slaughtered. By Yazid's army. Yazid was saying, You betrayed him? You will betray me too. I'm no better than him. 
they lost dunya and they lost ahirat. As Shaykh Effendi said, don't forget, the one who betrayed Hazrat Hassan and poisoned him too, his own wife, the ones closest to him. She was also promised dunya by Yazid. If Yazid is representing evil, we must look to see how good is attracted by evil. How a person can turn his heart. How a person can one day say, I love you, I will never betray you, I kiss your hands and your feet, and the next day, when power is given in their hands, something happens and their heart changes and they say, I will destroy you. It happened then, it is happening to us now. And Allah is showing Ahlul Bayt and the lovers of Ahlul Bayt, what do you do when you are oppressed? when you have no power. Do you give in? Do you give up? Do you fight for your rights? What was Hazrat Hussein doing? Was he going somewhere to declare Hilafat? As so many are saying. He was doing exactly what his grandfather والسلام, did. What was that? Hijra. He says, I will find somewhere where his power and his reach is not going to be there and I'll sit with my family and I'll worship until I die. He was making hijrah. To worship, not to challenge. What are we doing here? If you are here just to spend some time because you have nothing else better to do. If you're here because you want to see your friends and you just want to hang out, you're not understanding then Ashura properly. Because there is a hijra. There is a hijra involved. You leave. You leave not for something better that the world is seeing. You leave so that you have the freedom to worship. And if you are pursued, as the Holy Prophet says, in the Ahir Zaman, what is going to happen? As our Shaykh Andy went through that sunnah. What is that? If they come to attack you, what was the hadith? I know that part. When I'm saying that, that means something else, no? Don't sleep. It's a longer hadith. But Shah Fendi is concentrating on that last part to say. You don't even have that power and that right to defend yourself. And if, and the Sahabi Kiram says, what if they come to attack you in your own home? And he says, it is better to be a martyr than a murderer. Was he just saying this? He went through 13 years of this. 13? on Mecca. And it is showing the believers of the Ahir Zaman now that the time will come where the believers are not going to have power. Because this has never happened before in 1400 years where there is no protection. Where the Muslims and the believers in almost every country uh, even in Muslim countries, they're being oppressed. This has never happened. It's happening now. 
You're asking me the importance of Tent of Ashura this year. What do we do? Don't give in. The victory of Hussein, Hazrat Lari, is that and his family, they did not give in. They did not give up. They stayed true to their belief, to their lifestyle. And when it was not accepted, they went somewhere else. And when they were pursued to be killed, they could not even defend themselves. That is a lesson for us. Be careful. We are not asking for this, but we must take lesson. Because right now, we are not the ones who's being tested, but there are millions of Muslims in this world right now that they are being tested because of their faith. And they're being sacrificed every day. They're watching their fathers and their mothers, their daughters and their sons and their babies being sacrificed. And they did not give in. We have not experienced Karbala yet. They have. Not one or two. Millions of Muslims right now. So we should not live selfishly. And we should not look at all these events separated from what is happening right now to what has happened 1400 years ago. Think. Look at your sons and your daughters, look at your wives, look at your husbands and think if the time comes that they are going to put a gun to my head and says leave all of this and we'll give you the best of this world. If you don't, you'll watch them die. What are we going to do? May Allah not test us, but don't run away from that reality. Because we are going to be tested. Dajjal is going to come to test that even those ones who are buried, they are going to be tested too. And they're going to find it difficult. So the year now begins with a sacrifice. And it's teaching us how to live our lives properly. And to hold on to the truth properly and to wake up. This is nothing yet. Wait till 2021 or 2023 or moving on ahead. This is not so bad. It's not compared to the plagues and the pandemics in the past, this is not so bad at all. Cure is coming. Actually, they already have a cure. They're just playing. Allah is sending this. When Allah sends even a punishment, it comes with mercy. Every ayat that Allah says He will punish, He finishes it with mercy. But when man decides to punish each other, oof. Even shaitan is going to be amazed at the cruelty of man. Wait till man decides to punish this world. Wait till they come up with something. Then you are going to see. May Allah keep us safe. Amen. Those ones who are not holding on to a guide not holding on to the Holy Prophet والسلام, not holding on to how to prepare themselves with Hazrat Mahdi السلام, you're going to lose out very heavily you're going to be punished very heavily right now everything is obscured you cannot see what is right and you cannot see what is wrong what you see in front is just wrong and more wrong. Evil and more evil. If you have to choose, choose the lesser evil. If you are able to not choose, 
don't choose. Sit somewhere on the top of a mountain and say, I'm not participating in this. May Allah forgive me. May Allah keep us strong, inshallah. May Allah make our faith to be simple. May Allah not make us to become weak to give in. May Allah raise the station of our Shaykh. May his support reach to us to support us, inshallah. Wa min Allahu tawfiq al-Fatiha. Amen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Now give the Ashura. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The thing is not when something is going to happen and what is going to happen. It's not about that. When is going to happen, what is going to happen has nothing to do with us. Nothing. What has it to do with us is how we are going to prepare for that. If we know, we don't know. It's going to happen. Understand? But if we are preparing, then it can even be tomorrow morning. Because you are preparing. So the whole aim is in preparation. It's not even to know. It's to prepare as if it's going to happen tomorrow. To go to sleep in preparation if the day of judgment is going to happen. Ya Rabbi, forgive me. I'm too weak, but it's as much as I can do. Clean. You're preparing yourself for death. It's a simple. We're not asking you to go up and down whole night to read so much, but just to be sincere and to tell your Lord if you are taking my life. If it is good for me, then forgive me and accept my small deeds and make me to be with my share. So, you're preparing. Every night if you're doing that, you are going to get stronger and stronger because the foundation is already there. And then when things hitting you, the foundation is holding, you are not going to be like this and like that. Because you are preparing yourself. Consciously you are saying. Going to sleep, say, what if I die tomorrow? Don't say, oh, astaghfirullah, I don't. No. Say, if, if it's good for me, Ya Rabbi, take my life. I'm not prepared for it. But if it is your will, then forgive me. And for the sake of my Shaykh and the Prophet, والسلام, make me to be in a good position. If not, you're running away from it. You're not preparing. Fatiha. <laughs>